Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, got a series of repair videos coming up, um, but they're going to be some quite interesting radios and hopefully some interesting repairs. Particularly one of the radios I've got coming up is an AM radio, uh, which I don't think many of you will have seen, and it's absolutely in amazing condition, but it just needs a bit of TLC. Now this one came through from Steve. This is uh, some of you will recognise it as a Cobra UK 29 LTD STD sound tracker. Um, uh, again, a fairly this is a fairly commonly found radio um, that sells on eBay from anywhere secondhand between fifty and hundred pounds, and sometimes more depends on the condition. Now this one's in fairly good condition, as you can see here from the case, and. Um, I've got the sticker here for use in the UK only PR 27 slash 97 which superseded 2781 here in the UK for the standard for CBs. Um, now something you'll notice on this one uh, straight away is that um, Steve uh, is that it's missing the knobs. Now when you see this on a radio particularly when there's three that can sometimes be a bit of a worry because it can sometimes mean that the radio doesn't work and it's been started to be used as a scrap chassis. First thing I normally do when somebody sends me a power lead is check that there's not a rusty nail in there instead of a fuse. Um, brand new power lead, uh, but I think um, Steve might have took the fuse out of it for something because uh, there's no fuse in there. So we'll drop a fuse in there uh, first. Uh, although I do always do all my test and repair work on a current limiting power supply, so there is actually no danger of blowing the fuse anyway. Okay, the moment of truth. We pop a fuse in, turn the power on. Aha, we have a problem. Um, we're in CB mode. Normally, um, when you get no activity on the meter and on the channel display, it's very often the CBPA switch. We can see that that's okay. And straight off the bat, we're getting uh, these two lights come up, the transmit and receive light at the same time. Uh, although, that's sorry, that's the calibration function light. So, um, I would say that's looking like a voltage regulator this died, but this could be a bit more serious than that. So. It's always worth, um, before you embark, particularly on things like if you've got a rough case and you know you take it away and spray it, always do a test on the radio first to see whether it's worthwhile persevering because um, this might not be. And very often, like I say, when you see knobs missing, that's normally a, a, normally a sign that uh, there's a repair that somebody has attempted and failed to do. I mean, it can sometimes be simply a case that the guy... Uh, that's moving the CB parts or the CBs about just hasn't got any technical ability to do a repair other than a fuse that's blown uh, but um, we'll have a look inside this and see if we can uh, find anything the only thing I know uh, about these radios is surface mounted components on boards in these and uh, it might well be beyond in economical repair well the first thing to check is that we've got 5 volts coming from our voltage regulator and there's a 7805 down there uh, which I've just checked the voltage in is on pin 1 the ground is pin 2 and the voltage out should be on pin 3 and that appears to be working and we're getting 5 volts out on there so uh, we need to look for something else right the thing you're always up against with uh, fixing vintage radios is the lack of circuit diagrams now this doesn't really help so it took me about an hour to find this fault and this is where it can get a bit tedious but through process of elimination, um, we weren't getting any feed to the lamp on the, the bulb in the meter. So I did a little bit of poking around and tracing around and I found there was a switch in transistor down here. Uh, I was sensing I was not getting on this ribbon cable. There's another ribbon cable further up there. I'll just show you this ribbon cable here. We weren't even getting the feed out to the bulb. Even though the bulb is open circuit, we weren't getting the feed out to it. And I noticed on this transistor here, which appear to be in that circuit, although there's lots of surface mounts, it's hard to tell, that there seemed to be a little nick on the transistor. And taking the transistor out and testing it on my transistor tester, a little magic box which you've all seen, if you haven't seen, there it is, absolutely invaluable. And what and how this is even more invaluable is when you if you order it from the right seller, you get the little clips with it. And you can clip those even if you snip off uh, a transistor flush like I've done there you can still clip the leads to it because I did suspect that that transistor was going to be faulty and um, and sure enough it absolutely was so if we what I've done here is the Japanese transistors you'll find 
the the collector and the base pins are often switched around so if you've got one like I have here in stock you might find it's actually different because it's a US one or a international one not a Japanese one but what I'm going to simply do is I've took another transistor out of another scrap chassis here and uh, we'll just we'll just literally press it on the pins and what we're looking for is we're looking to see if the channel display will come on what we're simply going to do using these tweezers is present the uh, transistor onto the pins on the board there because bear in mind I'm not taking this board out of the case I'll just pick that transistor up I'm not taking the board out of the case because uh, there's an incredible amount of work uh, in doing so so we're going to just solder the transistor on the top here uh, so we'll just present it up and we'll see if it works so I imagine this um, radio has been broken for quite a long time so we'll just put my uh, double sets of glasses on I am at my age unfortunately a little bit blind um, but nonetheless with two pairs of glasses on we can see what we're doing and here we go keep an eye on that meter guys Just getting it on there. I think it did switch then, didn't it? Let's go again. There you go, can you see that? That's just with me holding it on, we got our digits on the display. So that was all that was wrong with this radio, and I suspect that's why those knobs <laughs> disappeared all those years ago. But can you see how hard that is to do? Uh, to track, to trace these faults if you haven't got a, um, a circuit diagram and you know you can look online and very often if you a quick glance you think you've got the right draw diagram and you haven't so um, you very often have to do a bit of tracking and tracing around and um, you know uh, that's literally all it was um, but uh, not for the faint heart and if you don't know what you're doing you'll, you would have never have found that so uh, there you go let's, uh, let's solder that in and then carry on with the setup there we go, you can see the transistor standing proud there. I have elevated it a little bit because uh, I think it does run slightly warm. Um, it might be uh, one of the reasons for its failure anyway there. But um, So I have elevated this up a little bit. And like I say, that came out of a, a scrap chassis. So a win for the scrap chassis there saves the day. Saves a couple of quid and the weight on eBay, which means we can get the radio back to the customer uh, as soon as it's... Uh, been tuned up so uh, let's uh, spin it round now we've got the uh, got it sort of on and uh, see what it does for us right of course there's, uh, there's other things wrong um, it looks like we've got a problem with the encoder the channel encoder there and that will either be a dirty switch or a, or a resistor or diode or something on the board there so we'll have a little look at that but it is receiving we've got the president Randy here and we'll just uh, one two one two one two so we're getting transmit, but we're not getting any transmitted power. So um, let's uh, let's look at that because we can probably fairly easily uh, fix the uh, the display issue there. So let's look at why we're not getting anything. Might have to break out the uh, analog RF meter. All right, before I actually go and look at the uh, why we're not getting RF power, can you see here? This is one of the pre drivers for the main uh, amplifier. Can you see how this? Um, track has lifted off of the transistor here now my suspicion is that this is uh, probably blown um, but you can see that the track has lifted down we've got a couple of dry joints as well around it so what I'm going to do is just going to rework these joints around there to see if that gets us going and if not then we'll look at testing taking this transistor out and testing it with our component tester right, all we've got here is a very old this is uh, I got that when I was 16, so <laughs> very old uh, analog voltmeter here. And if you've not seen the video on my little lens pen RF probe that I made, have a look in the in my video list. You might find this useful. And all this is basically is is a, a capacitively uh, decoupled probe um, for testing RF. And we're not after here any meaningful detection of. Um, are actual RF values just sniffing about for RF that's all we're basically doing and um, I can see here without looking at the circuit diagram that the pre-driver transistor for the the the, the pre-final power transistor there has got an input coming into it but there's no output coming out of it 
and I'll just show you the uh, how that's reflected. It's quite tricky to do this with uh, with one hand. So let's see if I can get this set up on the camera. Okay, that's about as good as I can do, I think. Right, so I've got the microphone in uh, in one hand here. We'll uh, need to clip the earth wire onto the chassis of the radio here, uh, just so we've got a, a reference point. And keep an eye on the needle there, and we'll just sniff about. So we're keying up on the transmitter now. I can hear the transmitter's working. And then the up, we've got RF coming all the way up into this. Uh, if I just took the little pin on there, can you see the needle going over? So it's coming in to the base and to the collector, but it's not coming out of the emitter of the transistor that you see to the second stage. So I'm pretty certain that that, um, that, that uh, transistor is a duffer. So let's get it out and test it. It's a 9426 uh, transistor, RF power transistor. And you can see it's written on the transistor there that it reads base emitter collector and put into the tester that's exactly how it reads base emitter collector but when you actually look on the circuit board emitter collector base uh, in that orientation so I think somebody's been in here and been fiddling about now we could um, swap in transistors now we could we could try and find the correct transistor uh, to go in in the pin alignment or simply cross these but I think I will check in the scrap chassis and see if we can find a suitable replacement. Yep so that transistor shouldn't have even been in there um, completely the wrong transistor so now uh, when I'm testing with my RF probe I've got um, RF power all the way up to the base of that of the power transistor which I've taken out here um, which um, which is, is actually okay. I've tested that on the tester. So we'll drop the power transistor in and I'm pretty sure then that's going to work. So uh, yeah, that uh, meter is incredibly useful. Right now, literally roll on about three and a half months, something like that. Um, I had a, a break, as you know, from doing the CBs and I put this one away because I couldn't get to, um, to the end of the, the problem with this one with the transmit power. Um, so we're going to, uh, take it apart again, I popped the case back on it and left a note for myself on the top of it. And we're going to see if it does have this same transmit power line fault that the Donita had that I've recently fixed. If you've watched the channel you'll see that the Donita had a problem such as this one and I actually sussed out what it was. So I have a funny feeling this one might share the same issue, uh, which I'll, I'll investigate now. So let's take the case off of it and get the circuit diagrams together and see if we can find the components. All right, so powered on, we've still got no bulb, we'll have to re replace the bulb in there, and we've got a segment out on the display, which I should be able to sort as well, possibly. So it's currently doing 0.36 of a microvolt, we can hear it there. So uh, it's uh, still got the original issue, and we'll just see what the sign ad we're doing. Okay, we'll just uh, change the level there and bring the signal up a bit. jump there didn't it so it's doing 0.49 of a microvolt for 12 db signer so it receives okay on this so let's crack the circuit diagrams out and um, establish where that possible faulty transistor is on the Donita the part that failed was this transistor here and as you can see on the Cobra we're exactly the same arrangement with these three here so it's Q213 on the Cobra and it was Q257 on the Donita. So we'll check these on the Cobra, pop them into the tester and see if we've got one blown. Right, there's Q213 hiding just down there. So let's take him out and check him out. It might not be the problem, but we'll, I think we're gonna check out the four transistors. 213, 214, 232 and 202. All right, let's drop it in the TC1. Pop it down. No unknown or damaged part. So yeah, uh, we need to find out an equivalent to that transistor. So let's uh, get and find one. Right, we're looking for a PMP transistor. We've got the specs for the the old one, and we've matched some specs up here. There's a sun glaring there for the new one. Uh, but obviously the pinout probably won't be right. But we can swap that about as uh, we insert it. And so yes, so we'll 
Swap it over for an S8550, which is part of this Bojack transistor kit. All right, so the old transistor has the pins ECB that way, and the the new one, putting it into the TC1, it's just that the base and the collector are swapped round one, two, and three. So we just need to swap the base and the collector round. We'll put a bit of sleeving on the pin so we don't have any short circuits. Okay, <clears throat> there it is in the corner there. Replaced a little bit of sleeving on there to stop any shorts. And let's see if this has brought the TX power back. I think if not, we're going to have to check all the others on my little list, my little crib sheet, all these other possible offenders. That was actually Q212. Uh, I checked all the other transistors and they're all all right. Uh, however, it is now working. And uh, what caught me out after changing the original transistor was there's a, uh, a delay between pushing the PTT. It's the processor delay and the power, and it, and it actually transmitting. But uh, there we go. We've now got a full four watts of power. So that's only took <laughs> three months to diagnose that fault. But I'm really, really pleased that I have because uh, it was a real, a real pig, and uh, and it's all it's all sorted now. So now we can carry on with the rest of the uh, of the work and. Um, I believe Steve has got, so he's actually got the, the, the knobs now for this and a new fascia, so we should barely get this all tickety boo. So let's um, carry on with the setup. But goodness me, I, I never thought I was going to get to the bottom of that one. They always look so much better when the display light works, don't they? So there we go, popped a bulb in there, not an LED, a nice popper bulb. And I can't fix the problem with the display. Um, this is just this is just uh, an incremental encoder. It's not actually uh, actually referencing these digits on the front here, so um, we just have to live with that. Um, I could, you know, the, the thing is the price, the cost of actually getting a replacement <laughs> display and then fitting it, it, it really isn't worth it. There's a lot of work to do to get that off to do that. So we will leave that for now, and we will do the tune-up. Because I, th I don't think I've ever taken three, well, four months to uh, repair a CB, but as you'll understand, I popped this one in the drawer and left it. So, uh, yes, it's really good to get this working. Okay, again, I've uh, printed off a, a picture of the, the radio. Uh, for transmit power, you've got your three cans in line there, and you've also down here got um, an adjuster, a potentiometer to adjust the transmit power as well. You can optimise it there first. On RX, you've got these three cans in the front end there. You've got your FM detector there. You've got a 10.695 megahertz IF adjustment there, which you shouldn't need to touch. Um, you've got your squelch um, potentiometer there. Frequency adjust there. Your deviation is there. Your VCO. Now, on this one, the VCO will need adjusting because it's not transmitting on channel 1. But I'm just going to do that until it does transmit on channel 1 because I, I don't have any information on any uh, voltages to adjust for the VCO so we'll just have to get it so it's transmitting and receiving on all channels so there you go you could um, print these off or pause the video and print them off I just thought you might find that useful it might save you some time um, because I think this particular fault with this radio is probably the reason why a lot of these were scrapped or weren't repaired because it, between the original fault down here uh, which you've, you'll have seen earlier on in the video and also the transistor fault. Um, that's quite a tricky fault to find. I think a lot of people probably did uh, scrap these sets for that reason, which is a shame. So there we go. Let's tune it up. So I won't um, go through the tune up, but I will show you the results of the tune up. So, uh, but um, if you've got to tune one up, this should be all that you need in terms of uh, a reference diagram that you can uh, just print off and. Uh, that's all of your adjustment points. All right, it's doing uh, 0.4 microvolts. We have for 12 dB synad, and so it's quite a lot to be gained off of the uh, FM detector there. Squelch is adjusted nicely as well. Um, we transmit power. We're doing the full four watts. We've got the VCO aligned now, so we've got the transmit power across and receive across all channels. Doing just a shade over four watts there. And we can turn that down with that adjustment there. Um, yeah, so all in all, I think this is all right. Everything seems to be working okay. That's as near as we can get it. 27.79118. That's in spec. 
and we don't want to have to go changing that crystal there uh, just to get that spot on so um, yeah we're all good I think uh, I think that's all the tests done so we just need to get uh, the, the knobs on uh, well the knobs we've got anyway and then uh, wing it off back to Steve so there it is back in the land of the living it's um, it's all working fine this one does have the SWR function we could see how well that works and see what the uh, SWR is like on my uh, actually go off of channel 20 go on to 21 you can see it's keying at the uh, monitor receiver there let's just turn that down let's just try the SWR function on this see how it works so we put it to calibration on the switch there and then key up and it goes all the way over there and then we have to adjust the uh, needle to the cow point there and then pop it back to SWR and see what it is like. Ah, oh, okay, not too bad. Seem worse, definitely. Okay, so we'll put the we're back up to SR and it's got this sound tracker function which is supposed to enhance the audio. But I don't know. I don't know if that works very well. So we'll see if we can get hold of Mick and uh and we'll do a test. Right, well, we got the uh, the sound tracker finally fi uh, fixed, Mick. Uh, this is a Cobra UK29 LTD ST sound tracker, and this is the one that's been in the drawer for months because I couldn't get the transmit power to work. Uh, and uh, then, uh, after all the stuff we're looking after, you know who, uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, I just left it. Uh, but because when I done the Danita. Yeah, Roger D, this is why we do these tests. It might just be, well, I don't think it's out. Um, there is a delta uh, switch on this. Uh, there is an outside chance I, uh, I tuned it with that in the wrong position, but I don't think so. But we will try the delta switch. Stand by. Right, I've just dropped it down, delta minus. Has that made any difference? Okay, I've gone delta positive. How about that? It's still no different. Um, just the same audio coming through that I've been getting all along. Okay, yeah, I've checked the deviation. The deviation was okay on this, so uh, I will give it another check over before uh, I give it back to Steve, though. I mean, this radio has been through the wars, though, so there is an outside chance that there uh, there is something uh, amiss there, but... Um, the uh that you know this is a the, the roking mic this mic should be okay so i don't don't suppose there's an issue there um but um i'll perhaps try a different mic on it and uh, see if that makes any difference at some at some point with you but um i didn't want to hold you up too much today but um signal wise uh, is the signal roughly about the same as what you get from me rog Okay, cheers for that then Mick. Uh, 
and uh, I'll just wrap this video up and then I'll get back to you. Just so just stand by one second. Okay, if you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. I'm really glad to get this Cobra working again. I will tweak the, or uh, we'll have a look at the transmit audio quality on the video. Or you'll have seen it by now anyway. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next set. I'm sure uh, we'll get this sorted, uh, but it's pretty much done anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Right, uh, if you have been, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next one, 73.